Hey guys, Justin from Gold Penguin here, and I want to make a video today showing how to use ChatGPT uh, and some other AI rewriting and sentence rephrasing tools to bypass Turnitin AI detection. So the way this is going to work is we're going to ask ChatGPT on GPT-4, which is the most advanced generative software right now, to make us an essay. And then we're going to put it through a few tools. One is uh, Undetectable AI, then we're going to put it through Quillbot, uh, there's one called Netus, Netus AI, and then we've got Word AI. So I'm going to show you how all four of these work, and then we're going to test it on a few of these uh, AI detectors. So let's go ahead and have this essay get generated. Um, and I also have not done this before. So full transparency, not done it before, I've tested this before, but I've never done it with this exact article. I just made this up a few seconds ago. So I, I did this for the sake of saying, um, showing kind of the real genuine aspect of if these tools do slash don't work because they are wonky in, in some regards, but generally they, they work. And the way that you have to use them is combining AI plus your own human intuition and editing to really create something that is not quote unquote AI. So the reason that I kind of disagree with the with these detectors, uh, especially like Turnitin, is if Turnitin falsely flags um, somebody of using AI, that's pretty detrimental. And now take that and multiply it across thousands of students that might be getting falsely flagged. Uh, that's pretty messed up. So I think a lot of lawsuits are going to be coming out in the, the coming months because of this. But here we go. We've got our, our article that's getting written right now. Uh, and let's go ahead and test this out. So I don't have access to Turnitin because I'm not an educator, but I'm going to paste this into, um, into our detectors. So we've got a few of them here. We've got Content at Scale, Originality, Winston, and Copy, copy Leaks. Uh, Content at Scale, I've noticed, is the most like liberal of these detectors. It's, if it says AI, you've probably used it, but it's not going to just call AI on things randomly. Uh, this already says highly likely to be a human. So sometimes out of the box, you actually get things that do work, but I will say Originality is probably going to say 100% AI. Uh, let's go ahead and just check for AI. Um, and so since I can't use Turnitin to detect this, I think a benefit of originality is it actually over diagnoses people. And this tool went from being fairly good a few months ago to uh, a little bit less reliable now because, well, of course, this is 100% AI, but I've tested this with my own essays, my own articles, my own blog posts, anything that I've written, and I've gotten 90 to 100% AI when I have not opened ChatGPT once. So Take that as you wish. These detectors really just ba are based on predicting the words to the left. Like if I were to blindfold you and I, I would say finish the sentence and I say some proponents of the electoral college and then you have to finish that sentence, what would you say? Would you say argue that it, per why I can't, okay. <laughs> would you say argue that it protects the interest of the small states? You might say some variation of that, but that exact sentence, uh, nine out of 10 times, 99 out of 100 times, if you train this bot, which is ChatGPT, based on millions and billions of data sets and of textbooks, it's basically like a really smart student that you're just feeding a bunch of textbooks to. And you say, hey, based on everything you know, write me what this sentence is going to be or finish it after this line. Uh, more than likely, it's going to say this. So if you were to ask ChatGPT to generate this article 10 times, you're not going to see this exact sentence, but you'll see very similar variations of this when human writing doesn't really work like that, where humans are very creative, complex, uh, and we're not perfect. I think these bots really try to become perfect, not by not on purpose, it's just when you're trained on a bunch of textbooks, you become perfect just by definition. So I have noticed that originality over predicts, but uh, we're gonna use this for now. So we have 100% AI, and let's try to get rid of 100%. Uh, we'll use Winston, this is another one. Uh, this is really meant for educators to test things. Um, which I have noticed is, is good sometimes, but not as ridiculous as originality. Here we go. Human score 37%. So I think this is a bit more fair, uh, not to really say something is hundred percent unless you're really positive, uh, unless originality is, but again, I've had those issues with it. Uh, but we do see, we do see this, this red where it says likely AI generated. Okay. So now let's check copy leaks, which I also tend to, tends to flag you as AI more than not. And this says human text. So some of the times you'll test this stuff out and you'll see it actually like 
works right off the bat. That's kind of why these detectors are not the most accurate, uh, and this whole kind of logic behind it is a little skewed. Uh, I get some reasons you want to check for AI, but there's some times that you will write human writing and get flagged as AI when you are not using AI, which is kind of one of the purposes I want to show here is, can we even use AI to get around this when I write my own articles and get flagged sometimes? So if we could turn AI into not AI, that's pretty impressive. So the first tool we're going to use is undetectable AI. I love this tool. I've used it quite a bit. Um, and they give you a few options to choose from. So you could change the readability level to like kind of what your vocab is going to look like if you want a high school level of vocabulary or if we want to use a doctorate level of vocab. So I'll go ahead and keep it at university level to keep it kind of general. And if you want the purpose, you could change this uh, to whichever kind of tone you want. We'll keep it on general writing for now, but you have a ton of different options to choose from based on what you're doing. You also could choose more readable, balanced, and more human, um, which is really more readable is going to be better sentences, but highly likely, high, high, uh, not highly, I'm sorry, more likely to get detected as AI, while more human you know, is going to add more va variability and randomness, which might skew the sentences a little bit, make them kind of wonky and funky, uh, which might not be the best. So I'm going to keep it at balance, and we'll, we'll do a run from here. Let's check it for AI. And it says it was written by AI. Um, and the way that it does this is it, it kind of compares what your writing is to about a thousand or so samples uh, on each one of these different writing tools. So they've tested content at scale based on like a bunch of different writing pieces and said, okay, more likely than not, would this get detected with content at scale? Yes. And so they kind of apply that logic for all of these. Uh, but yeah, so let's go ahead and humanize this. We've got 550 words in this article. Depending on how long uh, your, your piece of text is will depend on how long it will take to give you a new result. This says about 40 seconds, <clears throat> uh, but we'll go ahead and wait. It'll probably be faster. What Undetectable does is it rephrases your sentences and kind of rearranges how everything looks and will give you a brand new article. Sometimes even being uh, a bigger uh, word limit, you'll actually get like 700 words, you know, in a response when you put in 550. After we use this, we'll test it. Um, we'll test it on, on originality just to see what it gets out of the box. But really the two methods that I want to use today are un combining undetectable and Quillbot together. So let's go ahead and copy this and let's go into originality and let's start a new scan and let's see how it does. But right off the bat, we could see that we are at a 55% original, which is a lot down from 100%. Uh, the Electoral College, which was established in, 19, in 1787, is an outdated system currently used to determine the winner of the U.S. presidential elections. Despite its initial purpose as a compromise between Congress and the popular vote, it no longer aligns with democratic principles. Perfect. Um, okay, I do notice this should be a comma here. So this tool is not perfect, but look at that. We already just reduced this by over half by not even really changing much besides putting it into undetectable, which takes 10 seconds. Now let's show you how Quillbot works. So let's paste this. Uh, oh, I actually can't um, do too much because I do not have a premium account. Uh, Quillbot is free for not too many words and then uh, undetectable costs. Uh, I think it's also free for up to like 250 words. Um, but let's go ahead and paraphrase this and you will see that Quillbot will re redo these sentences like right in front of you. Undetectable doesn't really give you that option. They kind of just say, blah, like here's your new article. But now let's take Undetectable and let's combine that with Quillbot. You can go ahead and change the synonym level um, if we want fewer changes. Like let's do, is there like a medium level? Eh, okay, <laughs> let's do this, I guess. Um, the obsolete electoral college system, which was created, uh, you could see obsolete. If it's uh, here, this means it was just added. So we could see that this was new which was created, that changed established to created, is currently used to choose the victor of the presidential election. See, I don't like this. Uh, let's say the winner. There's some things here that like are just, they don't make sense. So you really have to like read this uh, and see how it goes. Regardless of the fact that it was intended as a compromise between Congress and the people vote, it no longer adheres to the values of democracy. No data guarantee this. Article makes its case for doing away with it, uh, ensuring voting rights are equal. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix this grammar. Um, voting rights, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be capital. But for all else, we can see that there's some issues with commas here. The weight of votes cast in various states is inherently unequal because of the electoral college. So let's go ahead and paste this back into originality. 
Um, this could be worse than before, this could be better. Again, I have not done this specific example before, but a lot of this is kind of just tweaking and seeing how things work. Perfect, <laughs> this actually is worse. So straight off the bat, Undetectable gave you a better result than Originality did. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, then uh, this plus Quillbot did, but it really depends on what you're trying to do, what you're trying to bypass, um, but you really just have to play around with it. So for this uh, specific example, I'm just going to keep it with Undetectable, but you could use Quillbot if you're on longer essays and you really don't want to change as much. If we change this to fewer changes uh, and then rephrase this, we could see it's going to be a bit more similar to what we had before. But let's go ahead and take this undetectable text that we had originally and let's place this across these other testing tools. So in continent scale, we are at 73%. Okay, that's, that's eh. Now let's check Winston. We went from 37% human. Let's hope that we can be a bit higher. Should only take a few seconds. Okay, we are at 79% human, and we will check copy leaks, which already said it was human text, but we could go ahead and check it again, and let's see, it also says human text. So you could hover over and you could see 84% likely as human. Um, yeah, isn't that weird that sometimes these things work, sometimes they don't, but straight off the bat, undetectable did work. Um, Coolbot, honestly, it does work for me. This was one of the few times that it kind of gave me that wonky, these wonky setting, uh, settings. Um, really, you have to mess around with it. You could do simple, change the synonyms. But if you want to go a step further than this, there are two other tools that I want to recommend today before letting you all go. Um, one of them is Word AI, which works the same way as Undetectable. We could go ahead and paste our chat GPT text into Word AI. Uh, I'm sorry, avoid AI detection into here. Uh, and you could also change that that variable if you want to change less change more change more is going to make it less likely to be detected but your sentences might be a bit weirder and not human like so we're really hitting kind of this paradox of these ai detection tools getting stricter on these rephrasing tools which kind of create this never-ending uh dog tail chase of like really what what is ai anymore <laughs> like i don't i don't even know what what's going to happen in a year from now i think uh a lot of problems are stemming from this but anyways, back to this, uh, the Electoral College, let's see, establish an 18, this is an obsolete system, while originality originally intended to as a compromise. So you can see that there are some differences between these two paragraphs, um, and you really just have to play around with them and test them out on these detection tools. If you really, really want to be positively overconfident, use originality to detect your AI. I think it's more uh, intense than Turnitin because again, I do not think Turnitin is going to use uh, or is going to falsely flag students as often as something like originality. Originality really loses nothing. If they say something is AI, they're just kind of trying to be as strict as they can. But if Turnitin flags students as using AI when they're not, which is kind of the opposite example of this, but I have seen it happen, um, we actually have an article on Turnitin flagging students at two different schools and getting in trouble. That's not good. Um, but yeah, so I would say test on originality because it's stricter. I don't think Turnitin will be as strict. Uh, they definitely have a bit more safeguards in place. I'm not saying they're not strict, but I don't think they're going to be as false positive as other tools would be. But go ahead and throw these into undetectable first. Uh, if you're still having trouble, throw it in the Quillbot and really only change what you need to, to kind of be weird. Make sure the stuff is human written. Again, this is kind of like an awkward time uh, to be trying to write things because, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff going on about what is AI, what is not, does it even really matter? But go ahead and put it through Quillbot, through Word AI uh, after Undetectable, and then you could also use uh, Netsys AI. It's kind of the same thing. I'll just show you how it works. Same exact thing. We paste it in. Oh. Okay, I guess it's not working. Um, okay, <laughs> well, I'm not even going to use them today. But yeah, same kind of logic. I uh, just kind of wanted to give you as many options as possible. Good luck. Um, this sucks. It's also very kind of unfair, I think, to students and to really anyone that's writing things, writers across the world that are getting flagged as AI when they're not using it. Um, and literally, in, in the last few minutes, I showed how you can use AI and bypass it. So it's kind of a whole cluster of problems that are coming out of this but uh, best of luck and the links to all of these tools are in the description if you enjoyed please leave a like or leave a comment on your thoughts on this and really let me know how you feel because i'm very interested to hear how people across the world feel about all this stuff going on 
Thanks for watching and have a great day.